Hello, welcome to Otaku Underground Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. This is episode 7. Uh, we tried to do this like a week or two ago. Uh, where th- For this uh, podcast, I'm going to build a gunpla. Which, um, for the last pod time, last time we tried to do this, uh, I was building uh, Kamen Rider uh, 5's model kit. Uh from like the Kamen Rider 5 series <laughs> which I've never watched that one and uh what, what it just it was just like a uh, muck up from like from go basically cuz I uh despite the fact of me I I have a lot of experience building model kits like Gunpla high grades master grades even from random series right uh it's because it's been so long i i kind of i've been out of practice and i even and i was missing some of the tools like you need to build like uh gunpla <laughs> which uh i just noticed uh f- ah, i'm missing some of the stuff i'm gonna need <laughs> uh well i got my sprue cutters and i got like you know I got pens, so I just need to make sure whatever pen I use has, uh, eh, is out of ink, (laughs) which buying dollar store, uh, pens, like, even when they do have ink, they don't, they don't want to work. Uh, the reason why you want, like, um, tweezers or, like, a pen or something that's out of ink is because sometimes, like, you'll get parts. When you accidentally put the parts in the wrong pieces, like, it's tough to get them out of there. <laughs> so, like, you want to have, like, uh, tweezers or something. So, um, I have, like, a bunch of uh, unmade model kits here. We're going to flip it, because I want to do one that's relatively easy for now. Um... We our two choices is the YMS03 Wolf, which is the um, it's a prototype Xeon mobile zoo. It's from uh, Gundam: The Origin, which I haven't seen that movie. I haven't bought it yet. I don't know. It's just the thing. I'm a little pissed. They make uh, OVA for like Gundam: The Origin, and then they just adapt the. Um, Char, like, Char's, like, like, origin story and, like, stuff. And it's like, dude, like, yeah, that stuff was great, but it's like, come on, man. I was hoping, like, they would, like, I was hoping they would remake the whole series, but they only did, like, yeah, Char's backstory. And then the fact, there was the fact that the, the mobile suits were all CGI. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, it just looks awful. When it wasn't. When you weren't looking at mobile suits, yeah, it looked it looked the show looked great. Also, I have a monster energy drink here, which I need the energy. It's uh Pacific Punch flavored. It has like a fruit punch taste. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not as good as the other one I had, which was a uh, Orange Chaos. And the other choice is um, the high grade uh, Iron Blooded Orphans Gundam Barbado Six form. This is at the one one forty four scale. This is the first Barbado uh, model kit I bought. This isn't the um, I haven't built any of them yet. The other two, one came with the box set. That Funimation put out for season one. I haven't built that one yet. I think that's the one where it's like the plastic's all glossy, and it comes. It has like a, a, the smooth bore gun, whatever. Um, but this one was the first one that I bought. I haven't built it yet. I don't know. I, when I when uh, I first started watching Iron Blood Orphans, I kind of took a break from building Gunpla because mostly because I ran out of space. For gunpla, and I even had to put I put them in storage because I I thought I was gonna move out, and I it turns out I didn't move out <laughs> uh, because you know money problems and you know go away at do 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 do. 
<laughs> that's kind of, eh, whatever. I don't know. We're going to... Where's... I'm going to flip a coin. Where do I... I thought I had a quarter around here. I usually do. Hmm. Be right back. Oh, I've also forgot to mention. I'm gonna. I have a top ten favorite mecha series that I completed, and a top five worst mecha shows I ever watched to completion. So we're gonna talk about that later. First, we're gonna decide which gun plot we're gonna build. It's if it's if it's heads, it's the Xeon one. If it's tails, it's the Gundam. All right. What the fuck? They both have heads on either side. <laughs> one's the queen, one's some old guy. Oh my god. Okay, if it's the queen, it's the Xeon one. If it's heads, it's the Gundam one. Okay. If it's the male head, it's the Gundam one. It's the queen, so we're building the Xeon mobile suit. Alright, let's get to it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this design so much, but you know, it was like the only um, Gundam the Origin model kit they had, so I was like, eh, fuck, I'll buy one. And like, I like I like collecting the Xeon grunt suits. Uh, ones I I have are the Johnny Ridden, um, Zaku Two. I got a Zaku Amazing. That doesn't count, really. Uh, I have a Marisai. That's technically Titans, though, but it looks like um, Xeon. I also have the Gabbly Gundam, which is like a Titan suit from uh, from Gundam Zeta, but it looks Xeon as hell. What else? Uh, I have the Rick Dom 2. I got the Dresden, which is the Rick Dom 3 from... Um, Double Zeta. Do I have any more? I have the... What's it called? The Rosa Zulu from... Uh, the Rosa Zulu from... Um, Gundam Unicorn. Uh, I think that's it. I, I don't know. I have it in storage. I have, in, I have them all in the box, so... I couldn't tell you if I had more than that. So, like, yeah, it, it looks like this guy is just equipped with a shield and a rocket launcher, which makes sense. In this battle, it was basically Xeon mobile suits versus, the, like, the Z, um, the Federation fleet. So, they didn't, I don't even think they had, like, and, well, in the original series, they didn't have uh, mobile suits at that point, other than the gun tanks. Um, but, like, yeah, they, uh... They kind of retcon shit in Origin, though. What's the first one? The body? Okay, we're starting off at the body. So... We need a... 114... Where's A1? So while I'm doing this, like, feel free to, like, you know, build your own gunpla if you have any. Maybe paint some Warhammer 40k shit, you know. Whatever you're into. So. What is this? It's. This is gonna. Hmm. Maybe I'll. F so A114. Uh, there we go. So people, after they cut the pieces off, most people, they get like, 
some kind of sandpaper and they like get off the excess plastic from the cuts. I just cut it as close as possible and then like, you know, scratch it off. Cause like once you have it on your shelf, like nobody's gonna fucking notice. Unless it's on the face. Then, then it's somewhat noticeable, but like, you know, there's not much we can, that you can do. Like, the Delta Plus had that fucking problem. Which, still one of my favorite, um, model kits. Okay. Oh, I fig- okay, I gotta figure it out. A one four. So, like, something, um, so I had some bullshit happen to me today. So I was like, I was driving to go pick up some KFC, right? And I passed by my local comic book store. And people know, like, if you don't know, I'm doing like this. I review comic books. You know, I'm currently doing like um, a thing on my channel where I'm reviewing like image comic book stuff throughout the month of January. Usually I do some, usually I'll do like a, Depending on what I'm doing th for that month, I'll do a review every day that fits that theme. But because of the stupid lockdown and the fact that I don't have a lot of image stuff, like I only have like enough image stuff for like 15 reviews, right? Unless I'm re reviewing like like individually individual issues, which I would never do because that's like that's kind of dumb. Unless it's like a first issue, but if I have like, if I got like the first three issues of a series, then you know, I'm gonna review the first three issues, man, fuck. Right? So like, I pass by, I see that my local comic book store is open, which I was planning on going there on, um, on Boxing Day to buy more like image stuff to review, right? But because of the lockdown, I just assumed the guy was closed, right? So I figured, holy shit, this is my lucky break, right? I see he's open. After I uh, stop by the KFC, I uh, I go back, I go, I park, and I'm ready to go inside to see, like you know, the pick up, you know, some hopefully some like. Young blood, wet works, you know, cyber force, whatever, right? Image stuff for the review for image month, right? Turns out you can't go in, you can only call and like do they do curbside pickup. And I don't have a cell phone at the time. Hell, I don't even have a credit card. So it's like, fuck. Because like they don't like they only t take from curbside pickup shit they only take you you have to pay over the phone with credit cards like i don't fucking have a credit card i think the whole credit card like i don't know why the fuck credit cards are still a thing when they helped cause the depression like <laughs> it's like credit cards is just a fucking scam man in my opinion Like, they help cause the depression, the p depression, but we still fucking use them. It's like, that is so fucking dumb, dude. So now, we need, like, C... We need the C tray. Oh my god, where is it? That's A2. Once I have all the trays memorized, it'll go faster. 
Oh my god. I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. When we get to, like, the half hour point, well, like, not, like, the first hour point, then we'll talk about, um, we'll do, like, um, the best of first, and then we'll do the worst of. So we need C2, 12, and 11. Looks like it's for a neck joint. I'm still pissed they never, like, if they were do, if they were going to do Gundam the Origin, they should have just made it into a fucking series, dude. Because, like, a lot of people don't want to watch the old uh, Gundam series because, you know, of the shitty 70s animation. So that, that's kind of the reason why I still haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I don't know, but like after watching Guy King, I maybe I'll, you know, because that's 70s animation. I've kind of. That, that, that's the thing. Like after watching a couple 70s animes, maybe I'll. I'll probably be like, you know, desensitized enough to where I can so I can go and watch uh um not desensitized. Yeah, I I've never I never finished a 70s anime to completion. Right now I'm currently watching Guy King. So after I finish Guy King, I'll probably be like fine to like watch other 70s anime. So maybe I'll check out um Someday I'll pick up, you know, the original Gundam series. I need D1. C2. F looks like just hands and weapons. So we'll just put that there. There's D1. So we need 23. So um, if you're wondering what's my favorite uh, um, let me just double check here. Uh, my favorite Xeon mobile suit. It's pro. I know this is gonna piss people off. It's probably the Camphor, but you know, I don't. Know, the Camphor is a cool mobile suit, dude. It's like the coolest mobile suit in um in uh, War in the Pocket. Which when I first watched War in the Pocket, I both loved and hated. it. Because I hated the Ber not Bernie, the little kid character, but, you know, re-watching a few years back, it's like, you know, he's a little kid, he doesn't know better. That was 18, right? Yeah, 18, D1. Oh, I don't use Gundam Marker, if anybody's wondering. I probably should. But fuck it. I don't know. If Gundam Marker, you screw up, you have to get, like, alcohol. Like, um, rubbing alcohol. The, the, un, un, mess up your, un, you know, the fix your fuck up. Yeah, it's, I know, like, it's probably sucks for me to pause every time I, you know. I uh, double check, but you want to double check because if you screw up, it's it like it's a bitch to like take the pieces apart, dude. Like a lot of the times, you end up scratching plastic and like you know, like I I fucked up my real grade Exia bill because I put the wrong piece in the wrong hole and I couldn't get it out. 
and it just ruined the thing. And it, and like real grades are not cheap. Like they're like fifty bucks. That's if you get it at a hobby store. You buy this shit online. Oh my god, dude. Like I was thinking of buying something. I had a um, my cu my cousin got me like a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. So I'm and I got back into gunpla building shit or like building model kits. So I figured, oh, I'm watching a lot of Super Robot shows. I'm gonna pick up a Super Robot model kit or statue, right? Because you know, uh, in my collection. I have, like, on my shelf, I have a little, like, display there where I have, like, a bunch of, you know, anime statues, uh, a Pat Labor action figure, a statue of Flash the Stampede, but all in black. Uh, I have an Uryu statue from uh, Bleach, but it's very shitty. I have, like, you know, Game of Thrones statues, like Jon Snow and, like, Jamie Lannister in his King's Armor. And, like, you know, I have a Zazabi uh delta plus from unicorn full armor unicorn gundam and like this and a zoids like zero liger zero but like looking at it it's like i'm looking at that display i'm thinking man it would be cool if i had like one super robot uh figure there or like monica whatever because like molecules are cheaper than the fucking um I need to go to E. The, the model kits are cheaper than the toys. So I'm looking on, on Amazon. Everything is like over a hundred bucks, dude. Even for model kits. the Like, mo, like your standard high grade, right, is usually like, tw if you go to a, a store, is usually like 20 bucks. Maybe it gets it to 50 bucks when it's something that's like, where it's a big model and there's like a shitload of gear. Like uh, my Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam and my Gundam Tryon 3. Both of those were 50 bucks because they come with so many gear. And it's like a very big box. It's like twice the size of your average high grade. But I'm looking at like the model kits for like, you know, um... Mazinger C Infinity, which is a recent movie, and they're all like a lot of them are like a hundred bucks. I see one for like fifty bucks, and I'm like, at fi even at fifty bucks, that's still rip off. And then I'm thinking of buying it. Then it's like, but like, why is that one fifty bucks, and the other ones are like, at like you know like twice that? It's like, dude, that feels like a scam, right? <laughs> Oh, hey, and then like you know, I hold off on it. I go to check it again, and like it goes up in like ten. It goes up in price like ten bucks. It's like God fucking damn it. So I don't know, dude. It's probably sold out by now, but it's like still. That's and like I saw like one that's like um a great Mazinger and like a Getter Robo model kit, but they look old as shit. And I don't know if I feel like paying 50 bucks for an old model kit. I don't know. I would like to get one Mazinger Z and Finley model kit. Right? And before I watch the movie. Because that would be cool. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I It's the thing where like I hate ordering shit online. Because you know. Especially now, they're gonna like, you know, they're gonna make make like excuses like why shit like you know it's gonna take longer and blah blah blah. Where does this go? Yeah, the chest is getting there. Do I have the neck? Uh, it's like backwards, but you know, it's not a big deal. We're getting there, boys. We're getting there. So I need C210. I 
Let's be one. There we go. I really need to get Goof for the my collection, which is like it's like the blue like Zaku two looking thing with the sword. That's that's the thing, dude. And I I don't know. And with the Aqua like the um, with the um, water like mobile like Xeon mobile suits like I don't know. I don't. There's none of them that look like you know that interest me to be honest. Though I really want um. Uh, like, uh, Sunrise to, like, make a Gundam series that's, like, just, like, sea battles and shit, and then, like, you have, like, the, you get, like, a sea, a sea, um, Gundam, like, a uh, right? Which, they have that new Build Fighter show called, like, um, well, it's probably old by now, because I've been out of the loop. Like, apparently Halfway's Flash is already out, and so is, like, tw some new um, Gundam um, OVA series called Twilight Axis, which didn't everybody, like, complain about the that the Gunpla for that was, like, piece of shit? I can't... Or was that, like, a different Gunpla? I don't know. And isn't it looks like the girl for that like the sorry they're like the mecha pilot for that as a girl or some shit I don't fucking know. Do not have a two around here. It for some reason this um, mobile suit comes with uh, two heat hawks, which is it's like the little axe weapons. One has a peg, one doesn't. So, I don't know. Oh, I also have that, um, one Xeon suit I forgot to mention. It's, like, the blue one that, uh, has the ball, like, the big ball shoulder pa shoulder pads. It's from, like, Stardust Memory. I think it's from Stardust Memory. It has, like, giant... Uh, it doesn't really have legs. It has, like, giant, like, thrust blue thrusters for legs. I forget what it's called. Like, and, like, it came with... You had a choice to either give it, like, a beam gun arm or a Gatling gun. I gave it to Gatling gun. Because the beam gun arm looks, like, looks stupid, to be honest. I forget what it's called. It's the thing where I would I normally wouldn't have bought it, but it's it was at like a hobby store, and at the time we didn't have sorry it was at, it was at a toy store, and at the time we didn't uh, have any uh, the hobby stores weren't carrying like um, gunpla, which now even like the video game stores carry gunpla though, but they'll they'll only carry like a couple. And I don't know if they, they say, they do like special orders for toys, but I don't know if they do special orders for like model kits. If they did special orders for model kits, um, that's, that might be the new place where I'll, because I'll probably, I would probably save a lot of money buying Gunpla from, uh, from, uh, them. Because they, they sell their Gunpla for cheap. Like I, I only paid like. 20, um, 23 bucks for the Gundam Wing model kit, which looks cool. Like, f fuck people who think Fellini shouldn't have blown up his, like, his, uh, gun plot. Just buy a new, but just buy a new one, dude. You're in Japan, like, fuck, like... For people who don't know, in build the first Build Fighters series, um, like a film, like this Italian, I can't remember if he's Italian or Spanish, but he's like this uh, guy who was like in a match and like he had he was losing and he was gonna bl um, blow up his like 
his uh, Gundam, which was a custom Gundam Wing model kit. And, like, you know, like, the main character from that show, um, whenever he's about to lose, he'll blow himself up. <laughs> right? Which, really, if you look at the explosions, it it looks more like the the... The explosions just like disassemble the mobile suit. So it doesn't like it. It doesn't look like it blows itself up, right? Which explains how he survives each time. But like nobody, like you know, they just want to po point out and like, no, he blows he blows himself up. But he doesn't die. That's bad writing. It's like if you look at the animation, it totally just looks like the explosions are meant to just to, to just assemble the fucking mobile suit. Because it's not a massive explosion. It's just like, you know. It just, it looks like it's tiny explosions around the mobile suit to make it fall fall to pieces. So, 19 and 20. For people who don't know, Gundam Wing was the first uh, Gundam series I ever watched. So, it has a special place in my heart. I like I had I have a rule where I, when it comes to master grades I only collect master grades from the Gun Gundam series that I watched as a kid, so that only includes like Gundam Wing and like fucking Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, which sucks because there was like a uh, one time I saw a master grade for like uh, the Gundam X uh, mobile suit, not the fr not the Gundam X like. From the first half of the series, the Gundam X from the second half of the series. I forget what what it's called. And it looks it was like dirt cheap. It was like forty bucks. And I actually like Gundam X because you know it's clearly made by the same people who made Gundam Wing. But like yeah, it was like I had I keep to that rule. I only co I only collect Master Grades from Gundam Wing and Gun Gundam Seed. Maybe also from Gundam Seed Destiny. Which technically, I have a Gundam, uh, a Strike Gundam Master Grade that's technically from like Destiny, but it, it's like the normal Strike, but like with just like different equipment from like from different a uh, different equipment pack from like Destiny, right? Which is like, uh, it's a Strike Gundam, and Strike Gundam is one of my favorite mobile suits, so I don't give a shit. So I'm not a huge fan of the freedom, but you know. I say that when I have like a freedom high grade and like I have like the amazing strike freedom gun. <laughs> Which I got that I I don't know dude. I got that actually used though. And I, I can't remember how much I actually paid for it. I, I hope to God I didn't pay like 50 bucks for it. Because like normal price for that is like 50 bucks. But I'm, I hope I got a deal. Because the box, the box was fucking crushed. But uh, the trays looked okay. But like, you know, I, I'm not paying full. I can't remember if I paid full price or not for it. I, I hope I, I hope I wasn't stupid enough to do that. Okay, let's double check before I fucking do this. So I'm currently building what looks like a uh, thruster pack. It doesn't want to go in all the way for some reason. Connects to the back here. Yeah. Something I don't get. It's like Halfway's Flash and Twilight Twilight Access is like already out. Like how come it hasn't come out on Blu-ray yet in stores? Fuck sakes. I just dropped the I just dropped a model kit I was building, which, it was a big piece, so it's easy to find, nothing to worry about.
Also, at the half the hour point, I'm probably going to take a break. But like, you know, it'll the recording will be paused, so it'll be like two seconds for you. Yeah, this is my dog had like diarrhea at noon, but like, you know, it it was like it was like a one shot diarrhea where she just like did it all at once. But she did it. She did it outside, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> She didn't poop inside the house, thank God. But yeah, like she, I took her outside, and then like within half an hour, she pooed like three times. <laughs> and like I took her out, like not even like an hour, half an hour, like an hour ago. And she, I, I just remember like not once did she pee or poop. So I probably going like going to need to take her outside again. And when I brought her back inside, she. It, it looked like she wanted to go back outside again, like. Sorry, just uh, getting the pieces I need. Uh, where's C2 again? Here, here we go. Maybe we'll play something in the background for the pauses. Uh, not, It's not going to be Mecha Slash again. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Mr. Anime <laughs> is still on YouTube, which I was a f fan of Mr. Anime before he killed his parents <laughs> like, and his brother. I I even talked to him like once. It was just, like this was like through YouTube chat though. You know, we're gonna we're gonna listen to like Red Letter Media's like fucking fucking Wonder Woman like um review. Apparently they uh, you can tell they got shit for the review because they they had to post up a follow up video, which they only ever do that when they fuck up the review where they, they say something where they they criticize Something not realizing they covered that in the fucking movie. They explained it in the fucking movie. Like they did at uh they fuck up during the Suicide Squad. I love how I live in Ontario, but they give me fucking at ads. Um they give me ads to travel to Ontario. It's like I fucking live there. Retards. Just can't fix the VCR right. Yeah, they can't fix the VCR right. Yeah, they can't fix the Did they kill themselves in the last review? I didn't even watch it. Because I, I could give a fuck about Borat 2 and whatever sh other shitty movie they were talking about. Holy cap nine. Yeah, every time my dad like fucks up his settings for his TV, he needs to call somebody to fix it for him. Because he's a fucking uh, retard. C2, 5. Rich Evans sucks. <laughs> like... No, he's one of those guys where he thinks he's smarter than he is. Like, watch Pre-Rec, and he has, like, the dumbest fucking opinions. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
Crunchy Roll. They know what Crunchy Roll is. Shudder, I would expect them to know because they're horror fans, but like, you know, Crunchy Roll. And, like, there's a Criterion, like, streaming service, and it's, like, I thought Criterion's whole thing was, like, was to uh, remaster, like, movies and then, like, re-release them. Like, like it's, I thought they, they were supposed to, like, you know, it was supposed to be, like, a collector's, like, kind of, you know, distributor kind of, that, that they distribute, like, Mo movies to collectors, but they have like a streaming service. That seems fucking no. Then again, like Criterion's like movies are super fucking expensive. Then, but then again, when you know they that they spend like m millions of dollars, re like um, remastering old movies, it kind of makes sense why their movies are so expensive now. But still, like. I don't know. Man, we got some bad, like, scuff marks on the thrusters, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Eh. When we heard about how long it took you to get your VCR repaired, why, we just knew we had to jump in. A16. However we could. Not to be confused with A1 pictures. No. One hundred years, okay. That's a dumb joke. I'll stop counting it out right now. Where the fuck is A one? Oh my god. Oh, there we go. You know, the gay one. Did he? But then, when we saw you snooping around the VCR repair shop, we told our clones to play along. You led us right to it. D-Wee, uh, D-Wee. <laughs> D-1-19. Oh my god. D-1-19, where is it? Oh my god. Is this the worst podcast ever? Probably. <laughs> you motherfuckers, you. Maybe I should just organize. Oh, here it is. <laughs>
What's with the drive soundtrack that's playing in the background? The 119. So long, totally sounds like something from Drive. Which, if we get the 30 subscribers, we'll be reviewing for Incel Month. But we're probably not going to get the 30 subscribers. Not 30 plus, just up to 30 subscribers. Any of the 143 million acts you have. Yeah, so you'll have to watch the old episodes you recorded on your VHS tape. And for that, we're going to have to fix your VCR. Yes. Oh, how much is that going to cost? Is this enough money? <laughs> Where the fuck does this go? Hey Mike, since it's Christmas, do you want to watch Wonder Woman 1984? Hey, why not? But does it matter that I haven't seen the first 1,983 films? Eh, whatever. It's just a superhero movie. Where the fuck are you supposed to put this? Streaming directly to a nice home theater system? We can avoid the horrible, horrible nightmare that is the movie theater experience. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, looks like it goes there. I don't know if I can go. PC4. The PC stands for polycap? I don't know if I can go. It's going to cost me how much? How much do you want to bet they like this movie? Go straight? That sounds hot. <laughs> oh. Yeah, people were getting triggered because of that. Spider-Man 3 sucks because Sam Raimi wanted to make like one movie and they wanted like the studio was like put all this extra shit in there. Like he, he should have just been like uh fuck it we'll do Venom now and then I'll do like the you know Sandman like movie later but like you know he wanted you know 
you know, he, I guess the idea, well, if, if they make you compromise once, they'll make you compromise again, right? I don't know. So now we gotta put the wiring tubes that all Xeon mobile suits need. What race than one? Maybe. Yes, because um, <laughs> the kind of movie that this is checks all those boxes of the miserable, over bloated, big budget, popcorn, big one trillion dollar money making nightmare. No, I tried to dig out my um master gray like heavy arms out of uh, storage and the, the stupid like it couldn't the stupid like gatling gun it couldn't hold it and the stupid belt um clips kept falling apart from the wire uh clipping i don't know dude which is sad in a way because some of these movies can be good but that's, yeah, that. it's, it's funny because we always, everybody always compares, you know, DC to Marvel, and the Marvel movies are always consistently good, average to good, uh, but they all have kind of a sameness to it, to them, and then you look at the DC movies, and it's like every different direction. You have a movie like this, or you have a movie like The Joker, which, you know, I didn't personally connect with, but a lot of people liked that movie because it was so, like, serious and dramatic, uh, and that was a, you know, quality Joaquin Phoenix performance. And then you have Shazam, which is like a, a kitty cartoon movie. It's just like every possible thing. There's nothing to connect any of these movies. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I, I still haven't seen Shazam. What their goal is. I don't know. I didn't like, you know. Try a bunch of different shit? I don't know. I, I, I just don't like that they don't call Captain Marvel Captain Marvel anymore. Even though he pre that character predates, I think, Marvel Comics. They, they can't call him Ca Captain Marvel anymore. It's fucking bullshit. It's like, well, does he predate Marvel Comics? I can't. I can't. Remember. I don't remember. Patty Jenkins, you directed one of the only good DC movies. You only directed it. You didn't write it. You want to write the second one? I had to look that up. Because I saw Pat, the credits. Like, I don't know, dude. Okay, we finished the chest. Now we're going to do the head. And it looks like the head's re relatively easy. That's, that's true. It's a very, very we're gonna need. We're we're gonna put a sticker on though. So B one. I don't know. I love Jeff Johns, but like, you know, I think he's burnt. They use him too much for everything. Because like DC and, and like uh, Marvel does this too, I think, where like they'll have like a really good writer and they'll have that writer like just write everything. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like you're going to burnt them out and they're going to suck. Like... This is reference Interstellar. Oh my god, that lo that like Anne Hathaway's character in Interstellar was so fucking dumb. I still, I, I would still like a sequel though, but like they're n they're never gonna do it.
guy to the mall. <laughs> and then you know, she goes back to work. And like, there's literally nothing there. Yes. And until you bring Oh, there's the one. <laughs> oh, I need E2, fuck. There's E2. <laughs> Yeah, that's the weird thing too about the opening. Like they have the flashback to her on. Oh, uh, that doesn't make sense. And uh, that whole opening is completely pointless. It has nothing to do with oh, that. Because I need E two nine, but E two nine is like a small piece. But on the tray, it's like a fucking massive piece. So what the fuck? Oh my god, they f they fucked up, dude. Oh, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, here's E2. I'm gonna need to put the eyepiece on. I mean, the eye sticker. There's like a small one and there's a big one. What should I go for? Yeah. I don't know. Let's go for the small one. Uh, all right, I got it there. For a second, I thought I crushed the eye sticker. <laughs> oh my god, oh, fuck. Does it have like a little swivel? That's cool. Oh, they. Uh oh. The stickers. I have the sticker too. I, dude, I have the sticker pretty much like the halfway like point on this fucking thing, but like it. it but like the stupid like. Yeah, I need to replace the sticker. The sticker's yeah, fucked. Yeah, I was surprised to, to read that. It was a point. Yeah, it was 35 millimeter and then 75, 70 millimeter for the IMAX. And so it had that, like, legit, like, grainy, real grainy film look. Like, it was from the 80s. I need to put it, like, really high up because the stupid visor, like, covers it up. You can add film grain and give it a movie look, but it looked like real, like, film. And so it kind of legitimately felt like throwback. Mm -hmm. And so the aside back, from some of the effects. Well the effects at the beginning were a little a little not great. <laughs> I, I don't really care about the effects anymore. I really just if something looks bad like the It's effect, cool they have it like <laughs> the peg like, well, that's, then it's like on a swivel but Wonder Woman show I mean we see Diana Prince of course but before there's any sort of like Wonder Woman action. Yeah. I think it is over an hour before any I think the next 
next scene is that Egypt action scene, the car chase scene. Okay, where's the top head part? So where did this movie go wrong? Can we, can we add up? Well, one, I didn't understand anything that happened. <laughs> Wishes, Mike. This is the weirdest sequel to Wishmaster I've ever seen. I wish this movie was never made. And I've seen Wishmaster 4. So I saw the Wishmaster that was made by Canadians. That the chick from, uh, the, the hot <laughs> cop chick from Corner Gas, which she's not really that hot, but, you know, really she's like the hottest chick in, on that show. As, as far as, like, like, they don't play up the nostalgia factor too much. It's like the mall at the beginning. Are you fucking kidding me? No, there's not a lot. There's, like, no pop songs in the movie. There's no... Aside from the mall at the beginning, we see, like, an arcade. There's almost no uh -oh. stuff. We watch the eye is, like... like I, mean, I put the eye... Oh, oh the fuck. Area. Very little of the movie has anything to do with the... The eye is stuck, like, looking to the, to the left, the right now. Even though I had it in the middle... It just like turned on by it turned by itself when I put the t the top uh, cap part. Oh, fuck you know. Whatever. We're taking a break and we're going to. I'm going to check up on my dog, take her outside for a few minutes, and then we'll talk about the my top ten best. My top ten. Uh, favorite mecha series that I watched to completion. That's important because there's a lot of mecha series that I've watched, but I never watched the last two episodes because, you know, I need an incentive for when the, the like, because a lot of those shows I don't own on DVD or Blu-ray. I just, like, watch online. So I, I kind of don't watch the last couple, of, the last two episodes or whatever. So I have incentive to when they finally do get released here by Discotech or whoever. Uh, hopefully Sentai Express or whatever the fuck they're called. Or no, Sentai Filmworks. So that, you know, because this, I know everybody loves Discotech, but Discotech, I don't, I've had problems where I'll buy their DVDs, their stuff on DVDs, and then like it'll be scratched. And like Discotech, uh, Discotech's movies are like super fucking expensive. Or sorry, DVDs. Like, I paid like 90 bucks for Orgus. And then like one of the discs was scratched and they wouldn't, they wouldn't replace it. I had to buy it again, which sucks. Okay. Whatever, I gotta, I'm gonna go check up on my dog, I'll be right back. It looks like, I don't think this will be a long podcast, because we're pretty much, uh, hmm, uh oh, there's like, there's like five pages, four pages actually, uh, I don't know, okay, this could be longer than I thought, just like, <laughs> alright, I'll be right back, bye. Hello, I'm back. So I just I realized something while I was out there. I said something dumb. Um, the whole depression thing. In high school, we were taught that depression was caused because of the banks introducing credit, not telling the people properly what it was. Now, after this whole like you know what virus thing started, uh, now. I'm hearing that what actually caused the Great Depression in the 20s was like uh, was this something called the Spanish flu, like some plague, the plague that that our World War Two, sorry World War One soldiers brought back from them from Europe or whatever. I don't know if that's true or whatever. That's just that's something I'm hearing. And in like Canadian high school, we were taught. You know, the depression was because was caused because of, you know, bad, like, uh, people spending money they didn't have. So, I don't know which is true, which isn't. But, yeah, this, I thought I would, like, elaborate. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> 
Just saying. So now we're going to go and talk about my favorite 10 mecha series. Which I only pick shows that I watch to completion. So there's a lot. There's like I was checking my anime list. Because I there, I could I wanted to. Because there was like mecha shows that I, I know I watched to completion but I couldn't remember them. So I checked my uh, my anime list is Mecha uh, series, which they had like a thousand mech over a thousand Mecha series listed. Some of them were straight up cyberpunk animes that were, were like main character wasn't a Mecha pilot, but the, the, you know it had Mecha in it. A lot there was some that were even like chinese and like korean like ripoffs <laughs> cgi like cartoons and shit which i don't know why you would put like i'm sorry like i don't consider like chinese and korean cartoons anime anime is specifically japanese cartoons like jesus christ but whatever right they use the that but they'll use the excuse of well, anime is just slang, Japanese slang for animation. Uh, so dumb. We're gonna do the. Oh, by the way, um, I'm going to also upload two videos of of my top ten favorite mecha series and my top. Uh, five worse. I couldn't come up with ten for like reasons I'll get into. Uh, I'll, I'm doing that because you know for the people for the people who are not watching this <laughs> because they don't feel like watching a three hour podcast. So we're gonna do the honorary mentions. One is King of Braves Gal Geiger. This is honorary mentions, okay? One because I don't know the series looks really cool and a lot of people love it. I, I just have a hard time getting to it because at the time, you know, it was I wasn't in the Super Robot shows at the time, and it's very, it's a show that's obviously made for kids. And I've as someone who may or may not be in his late twenties, early thirties, I'm just you know, it's hard to watch kids shows. Um, the next honorary mention is Armored Trooper Votoms. Which is a Ryo, Ryo Takahashi uh, series. Ryo Takahashi. Sunrise has two major uh, star creators. Uh, y Yoshiyuki Tamno, the creator of Gundam. And Ryo Takahashi, who created Votoms. He created SBT Lasner. Um, he created Fang of the Sun Dogrim. Uh, he did Gasaraki Flag, which Flag I'm not a huge fan, but it was you know it was all right. Flag I almost thought this I f thought was like a fucking uh, American ripoff <laughs> like mecha series because like the art style is so sh is so sh so basic. I don't mean to say shitty, but so basic and like so are the the mech designs, but like the the. You can tell it's a Takahashi show by the writing. It has very Flag has very good writing, right? And um, this is gonna piss people off. Infinite Ryulus, which is a show like for the longest time I didn't believe was a mecha show. <laughs> for people who don't know, Infinite Ryulus is like a late '90s mecha show. That's basically a combination of uh, Lord of the Flies, which if you don't know what Lord of the Flies is, look it up, and um, Space Runaway Ideon. <laughs> um, so the it's created by the people with by the couple who made like Gundam Seed and watching Space, sorry, Infinite Rylus, you kind of you can understand why. Like Sunrise, when trusts like a new like Gundam universe to these people, because it's a very great show. It's uh, for people who don't know. It's basically you have these kids in high school, high uh, teenagers working at like for summer camp or whatever, are working at this uh, space station to learn like 
um, jobs for space, right? Uh, so they can be trained to work like in like you know different jobs for space, like you know engineers, like spaceship crew, um, you know stuff like you know mechanics, general maintenance, stuff like that, right? Um, and the the space station gets attacked. All, all the kids um, are forced to escape in like this uh, spaceship that they found. In the space station because this the space station is falling apart right and it turns out to be a new experimental spaceship that has like a, a sp experimental mecha that that um that the villains of the show need because a uh, spoiler alert the you Earth is going to be destroyed, and the only thing that can save the Earth is the mecha that's on the ship. But the kids don't know that. <laughs> and there's also an HP Lovecraftian kind of thing going on with the spaceships and the mecha because they're powered by this new technology that, like, like that connects to like a different dimension that's driving people crazy. Which is why they're constantly gain. They'll get attacked attacked by the by um characters that are supposed to be good guys but because of the because of the side effects to these like new ships and like mecha they they kind of go crazy so it's a series that it's like 25 or 26 episodes um there's only like if i remember correctly it's been like a couple a few years since i watched it it only has three mecha fights <laughs> And, like, you only see the, the mecha, the first mecha you see is on, like, episode 8 or 9. <laughs> and when the kids see it, they just straight up laugh at it because they just think it's so fucking dumb. <laughs> Which is, like, only, like, um, only the, the youngest of the three kids who find it th think it's cool. <laughs> and they make fun of them for that. But, yeah, like, most of the show is just the drama of these kids, like dealing with each other on on the, on the spaceship like fighting over who's in charge and like st stuff like that it's very like it's a drama heavy show right and uh it's like it gets very melodramatic at times and like the main character the main character you think is going to be the hero of the show really doesn't do much <laughs> uh yeah Yeah, like, his younger brother and best friend, like, show him up, like, constantly. It's it, And it's, like, one of the only shows, spoiler alert, where the get, our main characters lose at the final fight. But it's actually a good thing because, you know, um, because then the, the, the people who beat them... Um, capture them and then like you use like takes take the mecha and then use it to save the earth right because the, the, there's like a weapon on there that they I don't know like you have to watch the show but it's like Infinite Rylus is a great show but like it's like it's you have to deal with it's it's very much like a soap opera in space right but it like it's a very cool show and it's very dark and moody. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't even know it was a mecha show because every time I would look at trailers for the show, like it, they would never show any of the mecha, right? All right, let's go to the next one, Evangelion. I would never seen the sh the the complete show. One, because I, I don't know, I just read the manga instead. And then, like, you know, I didn't like the, sh the, the show at first because, you know, the main character was an like emo, that bitch, and complained a lot. And then in the manga, you know, you can just read past those scenes very, you know, very fast. Where, like, in the, the, the anime, it's very slow at times, and there's, like, filler episodes. I don't know, the manga, to me, is just a lot better. And it... And it's not till like you ever had the you've dealt with depressed people or if you've went through depression 
yourself do you kind of understand and sympathize with the main character which i as a teenager i didn't but like as i got older i did like you know start to sympathize with the character right so next the next honorary mention is Gurren Lagan. Obviously it's a great show. Uh, I don't kinda kinda wish they would bring it in print. I tried ordering it and it never showed up. And but I, I did through a store. Right. Uh, the, the last one is Space Runaway Eidolon. Which uh, it's it's Tomino's show. That he made like right after like Gundam. Because Gundam was considered a failure. It was cancelled. And they had to rush the final arc of the show. Um, it Like the, Gundam only became popular after like uh, Sunrise decided to make compilation movies for the Gundam series. And then like the, the, the compilation movies were so popular in Japan, it saved the Gundam series, and that's why you have this huge, like, uh, gap, time gap between, like, the original Mobile Suit Gundam and, like, Zeta Gundam, right? And, like, there's, if you watch Space Runaway Idon, there's a lot of references to, um, Gundam, like, the main character kind of looks like Amuro, um, you even, I think you even have, like, a Haro-esque character. And then there's the fact that the, the robot in the show basically looks like, a, a, a GM. <laughs> or a gym, as some people call it. Um, yeah. I don't know, it's the thing where it took me a while to watch this show because, like, you know. Uh, I just, you know, I wasn't a, fi a fan of the mecha design. Right, because it's basically a gym, which is one of the shittiest, like fucking mobile suits ever. <laughs> like, right, because like you know they just constantly get they're, they're they're like cannon fodder. Right, there's no like name a cool like uh uh gym uh, uh mobile suit pilot like <laughs> they you don't get them until like the OVAs, but then they're like like in like Stardust Memories, the gyms look cool in that the gym customs. But, like, then you get the model kit and it doesn't look as cool. But, yeah, the gym customs, I don't know. It's still it's still one of my favorite gems, even though it only looks good in the anime. You get the model kit, it doesn't look nearly as cool. Because it's, like, mostly one color, and it's kind of a dumb color, to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah, Space Runaway Eidolon. I, I, it's hard to explain. I never watched the complete show, but, like... Uh, I understand why people love it. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. I, I, I honestly skipped the last two episodes. <laughs> Whatever. You know Discotech or... Well, not Discotech, but Suntai X Filmworks will probably... They release a lot of... Um, let's look at Sentai X uh, Filmworks. They probably... Well, let's just let's just uh, Google Space Runaway. Runaway, I do on. You know, eventually they're gonna put it out on Blu-ray. It's considered like a lot of people consider it. Um... Oh shit! It was released on Blu-ray by Made in Japan. Oh okay. Yeah, so you can't you can get it on Blu-ray. Okay. So it had like thirty nine episodes. That's not right. I I'm pretty sure they had like fifty episodes. What the fuck are they talking about? And there's also a compilation movie if you don't want to watch. I'm pretty sure Space Runaway Ideon has more than like thirty nine episodes. What the fuck are they talking about? I'm pretty sure they have like 50. Then again, I have. The older I get, the worse my memory gets. <laughs> I could be 100% wrong. Okay, so now we're going to go to the official. The official list, right? Um, this isn't any specific order, but, you know, I'll, do, I'll start at the bottom. So at the bottom. 
Number 10, we have Nodesco, which is a 90s anime show. It's like a parody of like real robot shows at the time. Like the main character is like voiced by like uh, Spike Spencer, the voice of um, Shinji from um, Evangelion. I'm talking about the English dub, which I tried to look for uh, not. I have, like, Not Disco. Not only did I buy it on fucking Xbox Live, right? I even bought it when it got re-released on Blu-ray, which I paid, like, like 80 or 90 bucks for that for it. And it doesn't... At the time, I'm like, this is retarded. Why am I doing this? And it turns out it was actually smart to do that because I tried watching it on my Xbox, and the, the episodes wouldn't work. Apparently, because I'm not connected on Xbox Live, even though I hard downloaded it to the fucking hard drive. God damn it. But yeah, I, I lost it. I'll find it eventually. But yeah. So, it, I don't know. It's basically... Like, it's like Earth versus Mars, and it, it takes a while before people realize that Mar Mars... Uh, they're, the Martians are actually people. <laughs> Because, like, it, it's been, like, Mars, like, has been out of contact, c contact with Earth, where people didn't, people forgot that they sent people there to colonize it. <laughs> and then, like, a lot of the pilots they're fighting are, like, people, like, that are, like, reminiscent of the, some of this, uh, super robot show they have in the TV show. Um, called Geki Ganga Free, which is a parody of Get a Robo, which you have this one character called uh, Guy, who's a huge Geki Ganga fan, who's like a really like enthusiastic um, mecha pilot for the show, who gets killed by a traitor, <laughs> which sucks. But you know he he comes back in flashbacks. But like yeah they. It's one of those shows where they kill, like, the coolest character, like, right like right off the bat, which sucks. <laughs> God damn it. But it's still, it's a great show. It's it's kind of comedy. Uh, the com sorry, it's kind of funny. The comedy is great. Um, it's very, like, there's a lot of nostalgia for, like, old Super Robot shows. Which, you know, I, like... I'm kind of not so much into, like, Super Robot shows. I'm trying to get into them now. Um, which is why I'm binge-watching these Super Robot shows. And I'm going to review them for the for the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, but, like, they make you feel the nostalgic. Nostalgia whenever they play the Geki Ganger free, uh, theme song. Which is fucking... I'm going to play it for you. for I'll play, like, 10 seconds. Geki Ganger... Which I, I'm looking, I looked up, I, I was looking at Mang, um, sorry, Mecha series on like my anime list, right? And apparently they made a Geki Ganger movie, which is like, what the fuck? You're. We'll play it for like 10 seconds and then I'll, I'll mute it. Well, yeah. Where's the good part? Do. Hmm. And apparently, for this song, they got one of the singers. And writers who did like the old like theme songs to Super Robot shows to make this one. I don't know if this is the right one, cause though, cause it wasn't it like you get to bar burning, which they. This doesn't sound like it. No. Ah, whatever. Did I mention the main character, like, p 
pilots like a pink mecha. Which all the mecha that the main characters use all look like, I, except for the different colors, if I remember correctly. But I don't know. It's the mecha designs look cool, and I don't know. Like I, I like the, I like the, you know, the show. It's a pretty cool show, and apparently they made a Geki Ganger movie. Let's see if it's on YouTube. I wouldn't mind reviewing that, cause I, I'm thinking. Well, because it takes it's taking me a while to put out the mecha uh, show reviews. I'm thinking of reviewing movies in between, which I'll probably be done watching. Um, um, Geki, sorry, not Geki, <laughs> Dino, Dino Mech Guy King in like two or three days. I'm already on like the fourth disc, and, and there's only six discs, so I only have like two more to go after this. Yeah, they don't have the Geki Ganger movie on YouTube, unfortunately. I have a hard time believing it, ex it exists, but apparently it does. Yeah. Hopefully we don't we don't get copyright uh, claim. Uh, I don't mind being copyright claimed, but I I just don't want to be copyright striked. Yeah. All right. So the next one after that, uh, number nine, which I should, I probably should put number nine higher up in the list, but you know, it's not this this list. You're not supposed to take it seriously with the ordering. Big O, which is a '90s like kind of New York, New uh, New York, New Noir esque show. It has this, like, it's a very weird show, because not only does it have, like, this, like, old, old-timey, old like, anime art style, but it also has this, like, Batman the Animated Series feel to it, which if you start watching the show, like, the main, not only does the main character kind of look like Bruce Wayne, he even has, like, a butler that kind of, that looks... That looks like Alfred, but like with an eye patch. So it's like it has a very like it. It very much like feels like they they, they watch Batman the animated series and like let's make a mecha show out of, that, out of this. Which the big O mecha is like really really cool, man. Like I'm thinking of rewatching the show. Like a lot of these shows, I'm thinking of rewatching to be honest. But like I have so much, so many like. Uh, shows that I haven't I haven't finished like I never I have like the entire like uh, collection of uh, Iron Blood Orphans and I still haven't watched season two yet, which I'm thinking of rewatching season one, and then we'll review that for the YouTube channel. Yeah, I don't know if you haven't seen Big O, it's available on Blu-ray. It's like 25 or 26 episodes. Check it out. It's a great show. So next show, we're, we're going to talk. Uh, number eight is, let me Google it first. Because I wanted to get the correct title. It is 1983's anime Super Dimension Century Orgus, which is part of the Super, Super Dimension... Um, trilogy the other two series is obviously macross and sovereign cross right uh i really like this show because it's basically it's robotech it's like a combination of robotech and gundam yeah you have all this stupid romance bullshit from fucking from um robotech but it's like it's not um, it's not as, as heavy, right? And every episode has, like, has, um, a fight, has, um, has a fight scene in it, which, you know, in the original Robotech series, they didn't. And, like, I know Macross 7 did, but the, the mech, the mech fights suck in that show. Like, I stopped, I stopped watching Macross 7 after a couple of episodes. And then there's the fact that the mech, 
the main characters mechs are like just like uh cuss like uh they just they just repainted like uh, they just changed the color scheme from the mechs from Macross Plus, one of my favorite anime films ever, <laughs> which I watched as a kid, like uh, in the '90s on like late late night TV, which was like fucking awesome. <sighs> Though I don't know if it was a mo I think it was the OVAs. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have the movie edition version. Uh, I don't think it comes with the OVAs, but whatever. The movie edition better, I think. I, I've i heard the movie edition is better. I'm 100% sure on that. But what sucks is uh, the DVD I have, it doesn't come with uh, the English dubs, right? So there's no Brian Cranston. Because uh, Brian Cranston did the voice of Gull or whatever his name is. The, the half-centrality guy. Which, I remember I watched a review where they said the, the guy is, like, the, the son of Max. And the, nowhere do they mention that in the movie. So he was, like, talking out of his ass. Or they retconned it. I don't fucking know. Um, what, what's, what else is cool about Super Dimensional, uh, Super Dimension Century Orgus is, uh, is that... Um, uh, there's some references to Robotech, and, like, I don't know, I just, like, I just, it has one of the coolest, like, um, it has one of the coolest, like, shark clones, for, that's, that's not, they have a really great shark clone, but he's not even, it's not, he's not even in, like, a, a Gundam series, but he's, like, I don't know, he's a really cool shark clone, and he, he turns out to be an ally of the main character, he's not, like, you know, he's not like a a bad guy or whatever. Though I kind of don't like the um, ending to the show because it because the the show ends with like a standoff where our main characters have to kill the past versions of themselves, and when they do that, they create multiple parallel universes where they all get what they want, <laughs> where all the characters get what all they what they want. And, uh, I don't know, it's stupid. Um, they made, like, a sequel to Orgus called Orgus 2 in the 90s, which was, like, an OVA series. It's really cool. Basically, the, the mecha from Orgus, uh, travel, travels through dim dimensions and lands into, like, this medieval world. So you have this, like, you know, medieval world with, like, mecha and shit. Uh, and they don't exactly know how it works, and it's like, I don't know, it's a really cool show, it's like pretty brutal, actually. Um, though, they don't have like a lot of mecha fights, but like, when, when they do, they're pretty cool, right? Which I'm not explaining it, but like, I don't know, Orgas is a good show. And the theme song is pretty cool, let me play the theme song. <laughs> What isn't it like gypsy la 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 la? I'm a gypsy. Blah, da, 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 da. Orgus theme song. For Christmas one year, I asked for like Orgus two on DVD, and they didn't fucking get me it. Yeah, damn it. No, it was the ending theme. My bad. I got a fucking ad. That looks gay. Uh, by Casey Rankin. Is this a cover? Oh, no, this is a different fucking thing. Uh, God damn it. My bad, my bad. Oh, one complaint. They have this robot in this show called Gnome. 
who is like it's not clear if she's supposed to be like a midget or a robot little girl but like it, it there's some weird scenes because she falls in love with the main character and like the main character's love interest thinks he's having sex with a robot and it's like dude like <laughs> that's that's fucking creepy as fuck There we go. Oh, okay. Ah, fuck it. New user shit. So that was number eight. Number seven, which I only included two Gundam series in here, because if I if I just because most of the mecha series I've watched are work on them, so I wanted to diversi there's the diversify the list a bit. So the number seven is Turn A Gundam, which when I first saw the mecha designs for it, I I fucking hated it. But like watching the show, it makes you love it. Um, you had like the what's his name Sid Hig, not Sid Hig. Um, let me look it up. They they got this famous like um, sci-fi um, designer from Hollywood to do the mech designs in the sh uh, for the mechs uh, for the mobile suits. Sorry, and like um, originally the gold sumo was supposed to be the turn A Gundam, but the Yoshiyuki Utama was like, uh. Nah, we needed to look more like a Gundam, like a traditional Gundam. So he re like you know, he rechanged the design. And I now like Turn A Gundam's probably one of my favorite Gundam designs. Cause uh, and then there's the fact because like there's like an 18. If you watch the show, there's like a Victorian like feel to the show. And because the V fin is like where the like uh, mouth should be, it looks like the V fin looks like a big mustache. <laughs> I don't know, dude. So, like, the guy who said me, I was kind of close. Yeah, he did the, the mech designs. He worked on movies like Star Trek, The Motion Picture, Blood Rain, uh, Blood, uh, not Blood, <laughs> Blade Runner, Tron, 2010. What's, what's 2010? Is that the, yeah, okay, like 2010, the, the sequel to 20, 2001, okay. That movie's okay if you haven't seen it. Short Circuit. Aliens, The Spirit of 76, Time Cop, Johnny Mnemonic. Oh, that's not a good one. <laughs> he did he he worked on Elysium. Elysium was good. Oh, he he died holy shit. He died like he died in 2019. I didn't know that. Rest in rest in peace uh said me. There are more people in the world who make things than there are people who think of things to make. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. There are more people who make things than there are people who think. I don't know. This sounds like communist a little bit, but it also sounds like it shits on the object. Like the uh, fucking uh, what's what's uh, Ayn Rain like a fucking Ayn Rain objection whatever they're fucking called who are like you know they're it's basically oh he's it's it looks like he made like. He he also supplied designs for not only Turn A Gundam but for Yamato 252020, which never came out, which was never made. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I didn't know Sid Sid Mead was dead, but then like then again, like look, how, uh, he was like 86, so you know he lived a full life, you know. R I P Sid Mead. Uh, and why I like Turn A Gundam so much, not just because of, like they got the Hollywood mech designs, but it's like it's it's di it's it's different than like any of the other series that like Yoshiyuki Tomno made. 
Uh, and it's just like he wanted to make a Gundam series that you know had like a Studio Ghibli like look to it, and I feel like he he actually watching the show. I thought he succeeded, right? And I kind of, I kind of like that the uh, fact that you know it's like, uh, it had like you know, I thought it was cool like you know the that it takes place in the far off future, right where, it, uh, the far off future and like you know they dig up like you know uh, other the mobile suits from all the different time, uh, from all the different like, uh, Gundam shows right which. Primarily, like, though, you only see, like, uh, mobile suits from, like, you know, like, uh, from the original Gundam series. <laughs> I I don't know. Do they even have, like, they should have had, like, you know, so, like, you know, not not from, like, Gundam Wing, but, like, you know, from, like, you know, like, Victory Gundam F91, shit like that. But, you know, they, I, maybe they did, I didn't notice it, but, you know, it, it's supposed to take... Like, Turn A Gundam is supposed to take place at the end of the timeline, right? It's supposed to be, like, chronologically the last gu uh, Gundam series, right? So, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Turn A Gundam really should have been his last Gundam series. Because, like, G. Reconquiste uh, sucks in my opinion. Uh, then again, I haven't watched the whole show. And I eventually I will. I have it on Blu-ray. But it's just, like... They killed my favorite. They killed an instructor. The main character killed my favorite character, instructor Dullinson, who went on a rescue mission to save our main character, but ends up getting killed by our main character, who turns traitor and protects the 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 people who are enemies of his nation. And it's just I know there's in story reasons for that, like you know they. His nation broke some rule, but like uh, some technology rule. Like all the countries are supposed to follow some tech technological gap, but they but they were attacked by like by a fucking Gundam. And I know there's some bullshit where the Pope was planning something. I don't fucking know, dude. I don't give a shit. You know, like you you turn like I'm sick of these Gundam series where like you know like because God. Japan is supposed to be a very nationalistic country, but then they have these like uh, series where like our, our characters turn traitor, like for like no reason. Like the main our main the main character of the show basically turns traitor for pussy, and it's like the dumbest fucking thing, right? I know he's a teenager, but still, his mom is like a fucking general in his army, and like he turns traitor. It's like so fucking dumb. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Turn Turn A Gundam was a great Gundam series, and it really should have Yoshiyuki should have like left the Gundam series after that. And like I don't know, that's my opinion. And I thought like a lot of the mecha designs for that show sucked, but it, it it's arguably better than like you know. Gundam Age, but Gundam Age mecha designs are like I used to make fun of Code Yes for having like it that it's like it's Fisher Price Gundam Gundam. As far as the I like I like Code Geass, but their mecha designs, in my opinion, is like Fisher Price Gundam. And then like Gundam went went and made like a Fisher Price Gundam series, and it's like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> for people who don't know what Fisher Price is, it's basically uh, toy company that makes toys for, like, toddlers. <laughs> Oy hey, God damn it. So, number six is Eureka 7. Eureka 7, or El Reka 7. I call it Eureka 7. I've been calling it Eureka 7. Uh, for, like, oh, for, like, over a decade. I'm not gonna change. Okay? <laughs> I don't give a shit. It's supposed to be pronounced El Reka. It's it's spelled Eureka. I'm gonna call it Eureka Seven, okay? And it sounds cooler the way I say it. <laughs> so I don't know the show. You have to watch. It's a great show. Um, not if never watch uh, High Evolution. I have it. I'm go I'm going to review it at some point. I'm just I'm just gonna wait till like after I review after I finish watching all my. Super robot shows that I have, and then I'm gonna, you know, review the other shit. 
Um, but yeah, High Evolution, which was one of the last videos that Mecha Slash made. Who's this? Who's this black um, anime YouTuber who I'm a fan of? Who hasn't made videos in like three years? <laughs> but like his Twitter is still active, so it's like, what the f where the fuck have you been? God damn it! You can't like you. Especially since his videos were very low effort. Like, you can't make a video, like, w like once in a while, guy. <laughs> but yeah, one of his last uh, videos was a review for that um, movie or miniseries, whatever it's called. Uh, maybe I'll review it in between, like, the next Mecha series where we're going to review. Which, after I fin finish reviewing uh, Dino Mech Guy King, I'll, I'll list off some mecha series that you guys can vote for us to review next hopefully we'll have some mecha fans that are subscribed to this youtube channel by then because like nobody i i know i have some anime fans that, and manga fans who are subscribed to this youtube channel but it doesn't seem like any of them are into mecha shit <laughs> god fucking damn it but like yeah i don't know dude so yeah, I don't know. I I like Eureka Seven. Um, check it out. I I don't really have much to say. Uh, except uh, I thought it was gonna become the new uh, Mecha series that rivals Gundam, and it didn't really do that because like, and you have that shitty movie they put out, which just reuse like animation from the fucking. Uh, from the main series, like there's maybe like what like twenty percent new animation for that movie. It's it's just so dumb. And they turned one of my they turned the, the really cool villain from Eureka Seven into a pedophile in the in that fucking movie. And it's like I have to go back and think like holy fuck was he actually a pedophile and like I didn't fucking notice because he like he has like kids like as his crew members for his uh, for his ship but we i just assumed like they were like kid geniuses or some fucking bullshit and they were and they were fighting like in the end of the sh that series they were fighting like supernatural like enemies so i thought oh they were kid geniuses or whatever or, or there was a specific reason why he had like kids crew members but then uh, he, like we know he went to jail for for something that he was thrown in jail, but we never were told what he went to jail for. <laughs> so it's like, oh, fuck. And he's very much like artistic kind of guy, but it's like, oh, my God. Was that, was Dewey, was Dewey Hol uh, Holland? Well, not Dewey Holland. Well, what's uh, Holland and Dewey? They're, they're brothers. I can't remember their last names, but like, yeah, it's like, like his name is what? Colonel Dewey or Lieutenant Dewey in the show. Which, they gave him a really stupid first name, but he was a very cool character. But then in the movie, they, like I said, they made him a pedophile. And it's like, the movie takes place in, like, a parallel universe. But it's kind of, looking back at the show, it makes you think, like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. I, I really hope he wasn't a pedophile. But now somebody's going to comment that, oh, no, he was actually was. God fucking damn it. Oh, I got I got the can in the recycling can, the uh, bin. Sorry. Holy shit! I usually I miss. So, um, yeah, and Astro Ocean the sequel. Um, it was like half the length of the original show, and uh, the I, though I thought the mecha designs were cool. I don't know. There was there's like time resets and bullshit. I don't know. I and I thought it was cool that Funimation got like John, they brought Johnny Young Bosch to uh, voice um, Renton, adult Renton, even though they have like a knockoff Johnny Young Bosch who can do like a perfect Johnny Young Bosch impression. Because like watching Soul Eater, I thought they had Johnny Young Bosch voice Soul, but it's really that 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 knockoff guy they have like michelle something or whatever um who does the voice of renton's son in the 
in this show. His name's Aoi or Aeol or some shit. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I Astro Ocean I liked, but it's like I don't know. It's it's not as good as the original. That's the thing. The original has really cool mech designs, and there's some cool mech designs in the in the sequel. But like watching the movie, the movie, it, like it had like I don't know. I don't know, it just seemed like their mech designs just kept getting kind of worse, but I don't know. So, number five is Robotech Macross. I don't know, I, I liked Robotech as a kid. I have the Robotech collection, uh, which was scratch, which some of them is scratched as fuck. <laughs> so they really need to re-release it on fucking Blu-ray. Yeah, I don't know, I know why people hate Robotech. And I, when when I first started ro watching Robotech, I didn't know the reason why hate people hated Robotech and hated the the Carl Masick or whatever, who despite the fact that he's dead, they still the people who own Robotech uh, still like block the sh Macross shit from coming over and getting English dubs, which so fuck. The people own Robotech, but you know, like, I don't know, like, the original Robotech show I thought was good. Uh, yep. So, number four is Code Geass. Like, I know I talk shit about the mecha designs. I'm sorry. But yeah, beside, despite the mecha designs, I do like the show. I like that this show is basically, they, like, they... The guys who created Code Geass was basically like they saw like they saw uh, Death Note and let's like and they were like let's make Death Note in let's make uh, a Gundam ripoff but like with uh, the main characters basically light from fucking Death Note <laughs> and and it's an awesome show I even. I liked R2, but then, though, some of the fucking mech designs, like, were really fucking, looked really shitty. Like, the, um, what's it called? The Tristan? Which, like, turns into, like, they have this one, um, uh, nightmare frame, uh, that, like, transforms into a jet, and it just, the design is just so fucking dumb. Like, it, that's where I coined the phrase, like, the, the phrase, like, Fisher Price Gundam from what? From looking at that fucking thing. But like you know. Not all the. I, I do like. Like the mecha designs. Like you know. The nightmare frames look cool. The generic ones. I forget what they're called. But don't. Like I don't know. Like later on. There's some like. Really dumb looking ones. Like the Alexander. From um. Akitil the Exile. Looks. Like looks very stupid. But. Uh. Then. Th though that could be just because of the CGI. But yeah. Which you can get the the Alexander for super cheap. The mall kit, like super the Alexander mall kit from Akitil the Exile for super cheap. Uh, I I can't even. Don't ask me to review it though. I had it on Blu-ray, but I fucking it the the case got crushed and the Blu-ray is warped. So I don't even know if it will work anymore. It probably won't. <laughs> Which sucks, because that wasn't cheap, but uh, what can you do? I don't know, I had, like, no interest in watching that show again, honestly. Um, so, number three is Gun X Sword, which is a short... It's, like, a 25 episodes... 24 episode series. Um, yeah, the, the requirements for this list was, like, it had to be shows that I watched, like, watched every episode, and it had to be shows that were... I had at least 24 episodes like so OVAs and shows that only had 13 episodes like you know less than 24 don't count um if you if you were wondering all right uh, so yeah I don't know I really like Gun X Sword uh, one of the first like uh animes I ever watched on YouTube back in the day which I I do own it on DVD now I don't know. I just really like it. it's basically Trigun, but like with Mecha, and there's like there's a lot of like Quentin Tarantino movie references. If you wa ever watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. And I like the and I like that um, one of the 
uh, people that join like Vaughn's team for vengeance uh, it, it are like old old like retired Power Ranger guys which have their own like uh, super robot that's combined from all the, the individual mechs. I, I think it's called El Dorado or something like that. But like it, for the final bo- battle they just said fuck it and like they they just combined the fi- they just uh for um they just fixed the robot so like you know it, it just stays combined <laughs> so that there's no more of the stupid docking bullshit which I I fucking hate that shit in mecha series the stupid docking but yeah, like I don't know. I really like the show. I, I really like the rival character. The reason why it's called Gun X Sword because the main character looks like a cowboy wields a sword, and his rival looks like a samurai but wields like a gun. <laughs> so that's why it's called Gun X Sword. And like I don't know. I really liked. Um, I think the character's name is Ray. His final battle at the end, he sacrifices life. To help his allies. I don't know. I really liked. I don't know. I really liked Ray. And it's a short but sweet. Like. Um, mecha series. And the. Yeah. Though I do think the main character looks a little bit too much like. Um, like the. Um, Spike from. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. Which if you look at the main character. You know. I don't know. Um, if. If you start watching the show. Like. Um. It, it does feel a bit too episodic at times, but it does eventually pick up when they introduce the man with the claw, the villain of the show, and, like, what they're doing. And I kind of, I kind of like the fact that, you know, our main characters, like, you have one character that, that our main character uses, like, this uh, really cool, futuristic, like, slick, slim, like, um, robot with uh, swords and stuff and like it looks very like futuristic and like you know it looks really cool and then you have like another character that that looks like you know a mecha from power rangers and like you know you you have the um, the rival character whose mecha is ba- looks basically like a like a Zaku too, <laughs> but with a with a shitload of guns and shit. So it's like I love that that like the main character, our ally characters have all di- like different robots from like different genres of mecha series. I don't know. You gotta watch it. It's a, it's a really cool show, and like you can get it. There's like a save edition to the DVD set, so like you can get Gun X Sword for like twenty bucks, and that's a really good deal, right? Uh, number two. Is uh, Gasaraki, <laughs> which I mentioned. It's a 90s Ryu uh, Takahashi Hashi show, which No Zomi put it out on DVD. No Zomi, you fuckers! One of the discs was scratched, and I had the I, I I I lost like a minute or two off one of the episodes, which I had to hunt it down online. But yeah, it's a really cool show. It's basic. It's a but the problem with uh, Gasaraki, it's a very like not only it it came out around the time when Evangelion was super po- popular, so there's like supernatural elements to the show, right? But there's also a lot of political stuff in the show. So if unless you're into politics, you're probably not gonna like Gasaraki. But if you're into politics, you'll definitely like Gasaraki, right? So that's all I'm gonna say about this show. I don't want. I don't really want to spoil it, but I will. I will say this: it starts off super slow, but it does get better, and there's some really tense scenes. Um, though, like the there's like a mecha on the cover uh, of all the posters. Our main character never really pilots that mecha. Like I think he does like once, but that's it. Um. Yeah, so we're going down. We'll go to number one. Number one is Gundam Wing. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. <laughs> I don't know. I really like... This was the first Gundam series I've ever watched. I... I... I, I, I was like... I was like... Um, I was... Let's say I was like 68 years old when it first came out and aired on TV. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I love the mech designs. I even have a fucking Leo... Uh, model kit which I haven't built yet but I I have it and it's just 
I don't know. I love Gundam Wing, all right? Uh, I thought it has great mecha designs, great, really cool characters, um, really cool villains. I don't know. It's just a great show. And the, the, set, the, the opening and ending songs are amazing. Like, everything about the show is perfect. And even Megan Fox, my waifu, it's her favorite uh, cartoon show. <laughs> it's, her, it's her favorite cartoon. Even though it's an anime. But she, you know, she's a woman. She doesn't know the difference between cartoons and animes. And, like, uh, for people who don't know, like, um, uh, there's, like, one interview where she asked, someone asked her, hey, what other, like, 80s, like, cartoon would you like to see made into, like, a movie? And, like, you know, she was, she was like, oh, I don't know about 80s, but, like, I would really like to see Gundam Wing made into a movie. <laughs> Uh, which, she's a woman, of course, you know, she's going to like Gundam Wing. Because, you know, you have the pretty boy main characters. But, yeah, I don't know. Gundam Wing is still my favorite Gundam series. And, uh, fuck you, Double O fans. Gundam Wing is 100 times superior to fucking Double O. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, which, I'm going to review the movie. Yeah. They re-released, uh... When I first got into um, collecting um, anim mecha anime, all the Gundam shit was like discontinued. The, the only thing I could find was uh, Gundam Unicorn DVDs, which my friend still has movie collection one or two of Gundam Unicorn, uh, <laughs> which I'm going to need to call him, but he doesn't return my calls. So if I have to come to his house to pick them up, I fucking will. Like, don't, I'm not paying like 20 or 30 bucks for the, which it's probably more than that. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting, I'm definitely getting those back, buddy. <laughs> but she's subscribed to this channel, but I don't think he watches the stuff. Uh, I might call him actually. Fuck it. I might call him now. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Gundam Wing. Uh, let's get into the top, the worst mecha shows I ever watched to completion, alright? Because obviously there's a, it wouldn't be fair to me to include mecha shows where I stop watching it because it sucks, really sucks. So I, I only include the mecha shows I watch, you know, to completion, right? Because, you know, I wouldn't be fair. Like, I'm going to list off some... This honorary mentions, okay? Which, these are mecha shows I never watched to completion. That I stopped watching because they sucked. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the, fir the first one is Gundam Sea Destiny. We all know why Gundam Sea Destiny sucks. Um, there was the, you know, the reuse of animation. There was the filler episodes. Or the recap episodes, not filler episodes. And then there's the fact that the, the the wife, who's like the main writer of the show, um, had feuds with some of the voice actors, so purposely wrote them um, bad. Uh, and then there's the fact that you know, uh, though my biggest problem with Gundam Seed Destiny is not so much the the show creators, but the stupid fucking fans who. Be trashed the fucking show for over a decade, and even though like the the show was a huge success and sold like lots of model kits, we don't get they they have yet the people who re released a lot of the mecha uh, Gundam series like Red stuff. Last time I checked, which my the anime store I go to like there's a lot of Gundam fans that like that um go to that anime store so whenever gundam gets re-released a gundam show gets released on blu-ray or dvd they, they make sure that they put it on their shelves as soon as it comes out i have yet to see these uh see gundam see destiny gundam C and gundam C destiny get re-released because of fucking retarded fans trashing the show okay well, I don't give it... Like, yes, do those shows suck? Sure. But I'm still, like, nostalgic, and I'm a completionist, right? 
I I love collecting like Gundam Mecha series, Gundam series. So I would like to have Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny on my collection, but I can't because you retards trash the show and they they won't re-release it because they don't feel like it'll make fucking money. They'll re-release Gundam Age. They'll put Gundam Age. They'll release that and they'll release like the fucking. Gundam Evolve and Gundam Igloo, even those those are like really shitty. Well, then they're not really shitty. They just look shitty. But yeah, it's just it just pisses me off, man. Cause I would, I would, cause like when you're a kid, like, it's easy to trash shit when you're a kid. But like you know, so like when you get older, your your opinions start to change and shit. So I would like to rewatch those shows, right, with an adult. With adult um, lenses, right? But because of stupid fans trashing it, like Wacky Modder, whatever, and other people trashing have been trashing it for over a decade, I can't get the show because the people who own the rights to those fucking shows uh, don't want to re-release it because they feel like it's not going to make money, even though it probably would make money. Because let's be real... Like, there's no... I have a hard time... I'll ha, I have a hard time believing, like, Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny is as worse as something like Gundam Age or a lot of mecha shows that have come out. There's a lot of mecha shows that get put out now that look like look like shit. I would rather watch Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, to be honest. And the reason why Gundam Seed Destiny sucks, let's be real, is because of the stupid, like, fans... Who wanted who wanted Kira to be the main character? Sh Shin should have fucking killed like Kira. The show would the sh Kira Shin is supposed to be the new main character, and like Kira just like takes over the show with his shitty like Strike Freedom Gundam, and it's like oh my god. Which the amazing Strike Freedom Gundam looks cool. The original Strike Freedom Gundam does not look cool. I even noticed... It wasn't until I had, like, Strike Freedom and, like, Freedom pictures side by side that I noticed the fucking differences, right? But, yeah, I'm just, like, so pissed off about that, sh that fucking bullshit. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Like, I... I I am waiting for the day for those shows to be, like, re released. And, like, I... I I did stumble upon them on like um, Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny uh, stuff uh, DVDs at like a thrift store once, and I tried to buy them, but because the guy saw my reaction to them, he looked up online how much they cost and wanted literally wanted me to pay fifty bucks for each DVD, for each volume of Gundam Seed, which they were. I think there was, like, I don't know how many volumes there were uh, when they were originally released on DVD, but it's like, fuck that. <laughs> I don't have, like, a thousand bucks to spend for that. For that for, I don't have a thousand bucks to spend on nostalgia, okay? Yeah, I did get lucky and was able to buy the, the first Gundam Seed Destiny movie for, like, I think I paid, like, ten bucks for it or twelve bucks for it. And I actually enjoyed it. It was actually pretty good. Okay? There's going to be stupid bullshit later, but I actually enjoyed it. Okay? And I actually am a fan of the um, Impulse. Not not really a fan of some of the color choices, but, you know, it's a, it's a cool mobile suit. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, uh, the other... Um, Dishonoring mentions are is Cross Ang, which is this uh, lesbian fucking prison mecha series that's created by the the creators of Gundam Seed, Gundam Seed Destiny. Uh, I don't know. The mech designs look very reminiscent to Gundam Seed, but it's the thing. It looks it's siege it's. It, it's shitty CGI, so it's like, if it, if I saw it 2D, it would probably look really cool. But because it's, uh, I'm looking at it through really shitty plastically, past plastic 3D animation, it looks shitty. Uh, and I, I really fucked up, because I got it, I paid like 80 bucks for the first half of the show. 
And then when I and then like literally they put out like a fucking like the 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 complete series for like eighty bucks. So it's like, god damn it, do I buy the second half of the series, or do what for the same price that I, I'm gonna that they're charging for the complete series? So I I never made up my mind. So I only have the first twelve episodes. It's like goddamn fucking Blu-ray prices for modern anime. God fucking damn. Because like anime, because back in the, the day, anime was super expensive. But you would pay like a hundred bucks, and then you for a box it, and then you would get the whole show. Where now today, like anime is more popular than it's ever been. But because of I don't know if it's because of piracy. Which is always the excuse they use, or like streaming websites, but it's like they charge they charge up the ass for like for like half half the show, or they'll put the show out in like you know quarters, and then they'll charge you like eighty to hundred bucks each, and it's like God fucking damn it, it's fucking bullshit. You you didn't have that ridiculous like pricing even when like anime was still a niche right and then there was a there was a time when i was like after high school where anime was starting to get popular again where like the prices went down but then like a lot of shit went out of print so i don't know dude it, shit sucks so knights of sidonia season one I don't know, like, I like Knights of Sidonia, the manga series, but it's the problem with the manga series, it's like, it just, like, screamed that the, the Blame creator uh, and Biomega, which if you haven't read Blame or Biomega, check it out, it's really cool. It, it's like a horror sci-fi uh, action series, and it just screamed that he was like, I'm tired of being... Like, a niche guy. I want to break into the mainstream. So he makes this, like, mecha series. Which the mechs... The mecha... He said he just... It, it's basically, like, a cut... That he took some, like... He took, like, uh, a gun plot of his. And just put, like, a cannon. Took out, took out the head and just put a cannon. Cut off the top... The end of a cannon. And just put it where the head is. Which I have a theory on what uh, gunpla it was that he used, but I totally forgot what it is now. I it, it was something wolf in the name. I can't remember now, but like you know. But yeah, like Knights of Sidonia. I don't know. I like it, but it has really terrible mecha designs. And then like, and then you watch the TV show, and it's like really shitty. CGI. It's like I don't know, dude. I'm I'm sick of Polygon Pictures. Polygon Pictures can fuck off. I'm. S they ruined the Levius anime. L like Levius anime should have only been made by Manglobe, and that's it. Cause they're the only ones who could like copy the art style. Which the Levius art style is pretty much the same art style that they use in the other shows, like. Air Girl Proxy, Witch Hunter Robin, Samurai Shampoo to some degree. But yeah, it's just, I know Manglobe doesn't exist anymore, but they should have brought it back to make that fucking show. Or at least get the character designers and animators, whoever you needed to go to make that show. Fucking hell. Right? I don't know. So, um,. The next two is Heroic Age, which why that shows that make a show such uh, sucks is um, the main character, the main mecha of the show, looks like a Digimon. <laughs> it's not even really a mecha show. It's a mecha show. It's the thing. It has the story of a mecha show and has the premise of a mecha show. But the main the the ro the no the, the robot the robots. Which, like, all the, the well, the, the story is you have these three races called the, um, the bronze race, the gold race, and the silver race. And, like, the, um, the, the bronze age is humanity, and they're being, like, they, they're being wiped out by the other races. And they, they use mechs, and, like, the other races, like, also have mechs. But, like, 
the the gold race or whoever or I can't remember, but like yeah, the main character turns into a mo into a, a giant monster that's super powerful, and there are other characters that turn into um, giant monsters. But like some of those look more like Mecha, where our main character doesn't. He just looks like a Digimon. Like he looks like a blue uh, War Greymon, basically, but not as cool as War Greymon. So I don't know. Fuck that show. I know. I I know. I have a f internet friend. Who really likes Heroic Age, but like I don't know, I can't. I tried three times. I can't. I can't finish the show. And they really, they really like uh, Funimation was retarded to have Jace. Uh, what's his name? Uh, not Jason. Um, what's his name? Uh, J. Michael Tatum. I can't remember what his um, first name was, but yeah, they got the they got the voice actor. For Scar from Full Metal Alchemist to to uh, play to do to play a teenage boy and it's like why the fuck would you do that that's so that's so dumb so the 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 last one for the dishonorary mentions is Breakblade which it's basically it ha it's a very similar premise to like um, Black Clover. So not only does Black Clover, like, you know, a Naruto and Bleach rip off, it also uh, rips off from this show, which the show is basically everybody in this world knows, can use magic, except for our main character. And there's, like, th this world where everybody knows magic, there's a war going on, and people who use magic use uh, has to use magic to activate all the technology for everything. Kind of like also in Cross Aang, which Cross Aang also ripped off from this show. Uh, and um, there's basically a, a mecha that's super powerful that only our main character can use because he can't use magic. And they one of the villain, one of the enemy uh, soldiers for this mecha show is a girl with big boobs really big boobs right and i'm and and i'm thinking wow this girl has really big boobs and then you find out the girl's like 12 years old <laughs> even though like she's she looks just looks like the same age as everybody like all the other girls pretty much except she's a little shorter you find out later she is she's like 12 years old and i'm like after i was like fuck this i'm not watching this show no more <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go fuck yourself, fuck the show. And it's a very short show. I don't even think it would like, you know, um, qualify for this for this list, but whatever. So the first, uh, well, I kind of want to stop, start at the the top. No, we'll start at the bottom. So number five is Gundam Victory. Wh why Gundam Victory is here, even though there's other shows one i never f finished gundam Seed destiny i never finished age and they, they don't qualify and i haven't seen gundam seed since i was a kid so i can't really you know ar argue whether or not it, it should be on this list but like yeah gundam victory is on this list because fuck tomno for people who don't know gundam victory was made when like sunrise was being bought by uh, Bandai, and like this really pissed like um, Tomino off to so much so like that he he purposely sabotaged his new show, which was Gun of Victory, right? To the point where like he made sure they didn't do shading for the for the for the characters, so the characters kind of look like shit. Ah, uh, sorry about that. My mouse fell. So the characters look like shit. Um, in the previews, he would spoil like he would he would show characters dying in like the fucking previews for the for the next episodes. And then there's the fact that like you know, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but like there's like there's characters that are supposed to be the the um, there's a character that's supposed to be the daughter of the. Um, the monarch of the bad guys and she's like a different race 
then the then the then the the mother the queen figure and they never explain that and that i don't know the show it's a great show but it has its problems and i and it also has like bad mecha designs like gundam victory i i have the model kit for gundam victory gundam victory looks great but the uh for people who don't know in gundam series Halfway through the show, the main character is supposed to get a new mobile suit, and they the new mobile suit for Gundam Victory, it it just like it just looks so dumb, and like it really does. It's just like it's like the it, it it's just a big V on on his torso, and it just looks it just looks dumb to me. It it looks too much like it just looks like they just replaced the torso. For the gun and victory, and it, it's basically the same machine. So it's, uh, I don't know. It, it just looks dumb to me, and like a lot of the mechs, the mecha designs for that series looks dumb. the The only model kit I have from Gundam Victory is the first Gundam Victory, which does look cool. And then there, there's the fact that people figured out that Uso Ewing is that that's Ewin is the main character. That's the main character of the show. People figured out that he's actually the grand sh the grandson of Shar Aznable. Uh and is that his alias or is that his real name? No, his real name is like Castle Zeon or not Castle Castle something, right? And um people figured out he's Shar's fucking grandson because there's a deleted scene where like Shar's like girlfriend is pregnant and people figured out that people compared her last name to like one of the last names of um uso's parents and they figured out that he that uso is actually the grandson of char and like i guess it was one of those things where nobody was supposed that it was supposed to be like you know something only the offer was supposed to know so like People and like a lot of offers do this where people will figure out a secret before it's revealed and then they'll change it, right? Like, it's if you read the Game of Thrones books, it's pretty fucking obvious that Dario Naharis and Aaron Greyjoy are, are the same character, but because people figured it out before it was revealed. Like George R. R. Martin doesn't want to doesn't want to admit that like you know even though there's a lot of reasons why it, there's a lot of excuses um, in world like reasons why those characters can be the same character because like Aaron Greyjoy nobody knows how he lost his eye and then there's the fact that the the is like um, Aaron Greyjoy, sorry, um, Darian O'Hara's character doesn't make a lot of sense. And then, you know, he's like, uh, what's it called? I can't remember the name of his people. It's like the Mirish or some shit. Starts with an M. And then, like, there's, um, there are points in the uh, Game of Thrones where, like, books where Ironborn will, will like, um, will disguise themselves as that group of people. Which is, where, which is like, a merchant people who dyed their hair and beards like uh wild colors and shit i don't know if you if you read the books you know there's and you look at you know fury videos it makes sense that dario naharis and aaron Greyjoy, who who knows blood magic who knows like you know who tortured just like in the hp lovecraft story uh uh, the mysterious case of Randolph Carter, not Randolph Carter. I can't remember the fucking short story. But there's like a short story where this guy resurrects wizards and tortures them to learn their magic. Uh, to learn magic, that ca that character, um, like uh, Euron Greyjoy, does that as well in Game of Thrones. So it so it makes sense that he would have magic. Um, he has magic that can get him across the the ocean, you know, super fast, right? <laughs> I'm not explaining it very well, but yeah, it's like, yeah, b basically people figured out that Uso is Char's grandson, and that really pissed off Tomino, so he won't, like, he won't admit it's true, even though, like, it, it, we know it's true. And it explains why Uso is a powerful new type and shit like that. 
Uh, yeah, so that's number five. Number four is Robotech Season 2, a.k.a. Southern Cross, which is the second... Um, which is the second... Um, what's it called? Let me double check. It's like, it's part of the um, Super Dimensional Trilogy. Uh, Carl Masick somehow was able to, like, convince... Uh, the people own like Sovereign Cross to buy the show from them, which I I think they did because it it had like really low ratings, like it, it's it's not considered a good show. Uh, Mecha series shit, because it's also a constellation, isn't it? Yeah, Super Dimension Calvary Sovereign Cross. And then, like, in the TV show, it, it's, like, it's, like, the, the, in the Robotech universe, she's supposed to be the daughter of Max, even though it's supposed, they're, I think they had a s son or something, I can't remember. No, and, like, um, no, they had a daughter, actually. But I, I remember in Robo the Robotech, they said she had a son, but, like, they, and uh in Macross 7 it was a daughter, right? Yeah, in Macross 7 you see Max and uh what's her name? Minerva? Minerva? I can't remember her name, but like, yeah, that um I don't know, watch Macross 7. It, I I don't know. There's there's some cool shit in it. I don't know. I uh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. This show you have to watch it to know how terrible it is. Um, what what's its rating on my anime list? Because I remember I had like a six out of ten or something. Which my anime list kind of sucks because they give like a lot of high ratings to a lot of bullshit. Like shit that should be considered sh like that should be considered shitty. They'll give like they'll give like average reviews to it. Yeah, it's like a six point five fifty eight. I don't know. It it sucks. You got. Uh, I was able to complete it only because I really wanted to watch the third season Robotech because that, in that season they adapt um, Maspita, or not adapt Maspita, but that you know they they took Maspita and changed the story to make it Robotech. But I I heard from people that they didn't change the story that much. And I don't know, Mespita, I really like the mech designs from Mespita. Uh, that, and that's why I really wanted to watch, you know, season three. So I, I didn't want to skip a season in case they made references and shit, which of course they did. I don't know. It's like, it's one of those shows where like all, a lot of the, the female, um, a lot of the best pilots of the, sh the anime are all female are all female except for like you know the one guy who's like an alien who's like the love interest for the for the main character which I forget her name and um American version they're not they're only showing the Japanese version they're not showing Robotech the their Robotech names I don't know it it sucks like her, I think her name was Marie Marie in the Robotech 2. I don't know. It sucks. So, number three is Kafner. Why Kafner's... In, and I don't even know which uh, Kafner series I watched. Because there's a shitload of them. And on my Blu-ray, it just says Kafner the Complete Series. And, like, Funimation has put out more Kafner shows... But they're, they don't, it doesn't say which one I, I have on there. So, I don't know. Maybe if I put the Blu-ray in. Oh, my God. I'm Googling it. I'm Googling, uh, fuck. I'm Googling it now. Sorry, whenever my throat gets dry, I have trouble talking. So, I need to drink something, but I don't have anything to drink. Oh, I got a bottle of water here. Fuck, I spelled it wrong. I meant Fafner. I spelled... I put Kafner here. <laughs> I'm a retard. 
the yeah Fafner and the Ashura. A tiny island, a giant robot, the last lines of defense of a hostile enemy. I think this is the this is the one I watched. They're showing off the toys. I don't know the. Um, one thing, um, holy fuck, it has way too much a high, like, way too high a rating. Oh, my God. So, this is pretty much, like, another ripoff of Evangelion. One, one thing, I have two things, uh, two pieces of praise for this show. One, they have... Unique mecha designs. Two, uh, it has kind of like a right wing moral story to it, and then like and the bad guys is the alien the aliens for the show could be interpreted as like uh, allegory for communism, <laughs> um, or it could be interpreted interpreted as like religion i'm not 100 sure i think it's communism but i could be wrong but i don't know i i besides from that like it's the thing where it has really cool characters i mean there's some cool characters but the problem with the show is the the animation the the Aesthetically, in the show, the the robots look great, but then once they start moving, once they start fighting, the animation is very stilted and looks like shit, right? So, like the the money shots for the for the, any mecha series is the fights, but the fights look like the look, look like shit. I'm not even lying. And then there's this one character who's supposed to be the cool character in the show. Um, and they very much, they, they, whenever a character, there's this thing, when, whenever a character, uh, is going to die, they telegraph it, like, they, they telegraph it, like, you know by the beginning of that episode, oh, fuck, they're gonna kill that character. So that's one of the reasons why I hate the show, but yeah, the main reason is the really, the fact that, you know, there's the, it rips off Evangelion, and there's the whole, like, you know, it, like, the whole... Uh, pretty bad animation, and I, I not, and the 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 mechs themselves, the mecha the sum themselves look really shitty in my opinion, but at the same time it's very original. So it's like I don't know, it's the thing where if they change the heads, I would probably, I probably would like them, but the head designs for the heads for these robots look really shitty, and I don't know, dude. Like it, this show sucks. Don't watch it. The second show, that I, the number two, is Line Barrels of Iron. Do I need to say more? <laughs> Though I hear they didn't um, adapt the whole manga series. So the manga could be better than the anime. But yeah, it's just... Uh, I would have to watch it again to, to, uh, to explain... Uh, properly like how, how this show sucks but one of the problems of the show is uh, they the main character is an asshole who abuses his power and but the but um, this there's this girl character who who um, pretends to hate him and acts like a bitch to him so he so he can set him himself right and he does he does start listening to people and starts acting more like a team player and like you know becomes like an important member of the team and like learns his lesson right and she continues to be a bitch to him till the final episode and it's just why the fuck they took a character that's that was really nice and like you know um really cool the, the very sweet uh, female character, and then they just turn her into a bitch, and it it's implied she's faking it, but it's like, why the fuck are you still acting like a bitch? He fixed his he fixed himself 
and she continues to act like a bitch, and it's like, what the fuck? And then there's the, sh- and then there's like, you know, the at the like the final shot of the TV show, they're flying through space, and then they they see like, uh, I a character that looks a lot like Amro and his Gundam, but they changed it enough so they wouldn't get sued by Sunrise. Uh, but yeah, it was like very fucking weird. Like, what the fuck? Mm. Also, the character designs uh, looked very shitty. It's by the same character designer as like Gundam Seed. I don't know what her deal is. It's like she she had some really cool character designs, and then like after Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, her character designs for TV shows look like shit. Like, check out Majestic Prince, which is... Uh, Majestic Prince isn't on this list because out of the CGI, like, you know, shows that she worked on, Majestic Prince is better than, like, you know, Kathner, Kaff, better than Line Barrels of Iron. I'm not saying... I'm, I'm not saying I would recommend it, but it's, you know, it's a good show. Not a good show. It's I, it's it. There's not there's not a lot of reasons to hate. It. And also, line barrels of iron. The mech designs are very reminiscent of Zone of the Enders, but they but they they took the really cool Zone of the Enders like mech designs and then like uh, dumbed it down by having characters with katanas and shit. And like I don't know they. They they stole our boy Yo uh, Yo uh, Yo Chan, which that's like uh, Hideo's Kindi, uh, Kojima's like nickname for Sh- y- Yoshi Shinkawa, whatever his name is, uh, Yo Chan, and they took they stole his mecha designs and like um, dumbed them down. Really, you have a ki- like you have like literally like our the me- the main mechas. The main mecha for the show. And then there's another character that has a, another uh, mecha that lo- looks just like Jehudi, but like black with, you know, new parts. And yeah, they just, they took Jehudi, made made him white and like red, and just put like katanas, uh, katanas on him. And, but the, the mecha is called like Line Barrow, but like he has no like um, guns. So it's like, why the fuck? I don't know. And the CGI looks very fucking bad. It's a, but it's an early 2000s show. But what sucks is if you were to buy I if you were to look at the DVD cover for Lion Bears of Iron, they make they made it 2D and it actually looks cool. So when the the mech design you see it in 2D, it actually looks really cool. And 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 they they try they try to trick people into buying this like show, dude. It, it's like fucking awful. Fuck Funimation. Funimation has like the worst. They buy the worst fucking mecha shows. I swear. Yeah, because when you see it the in two D, it actually lo- looks pretty cool. Holy shit! It has a very long neck for some fucking reason. Like, look at Lion Barrel of Iron and tell me it doesn't look, it doesn't remind you of Zone of the Enders. And this one cover from Japan, they actually have the CGI mecha, but like from the for the English uh, versions, uh, English covers, they have like hand drawn <laughs> uh, versions of the robot. So it's like, oh my god. And I it, and like my DVD came with the two like OVAs. I, I haven't watched it. And also, this show also has one of the reasons why the character changed his ways. Koichi is because he got his friend killed, and then later on, his his friend is working for the bad guys as a pilot. And it's like, what the fuck is this? And also, there's like a lolly scientist uh, girl on the on the show, and it's I don't know that. That pissed me off. And isn't and there's like these pair of twins and one of them's like a cross dresser. I don't fucking know. Um, so number one 
on this list of worst anime shows I ever watched is Aquarion. Which they made like they made like three Aquarion series. Uh I I watched the first one, watched the second one, Avo, and I, I couldn't even finish Avo. It was so fucking bad. Like Aquarion, I tried my best despite this shitty CGI. It for people who don't know what Aquarion is, it's basically they the director of Macross Plus made the shitty uh, super robot show and it's just it's just fucking awful. And like it's like the different pilots control different like uh, machines that combine together in like uh, three like three combinations. So like you'll have like three machines that will combine and depending on who's on top, you know, you get like the different version of Aquarion. And whenever the the machines combine, you have these like really shitty like uh. And anim like animation where like you'll see the characters naked and like it's like they're having an orgasm. It's like super fucking creeping weird. Like you have really shitty hairstyles as well. It's like I don't know the show. The show sucks and it's like it's like hard to believe that it's made by the guy from who made Macross Plus. You made one of the coolest mecha anime films ever and like you make this piece of fucking piece of garbage but you know but they couldn't like rip off like days of thunder and top gun again <laughs> that's the thing with macros plus it's basically days of thunder and like um and uh top gun combined together but they but set in like fucking macros universe and they and they got yoko Kano to I think they got Yoko Kano to do the music and it, it just the the soundtrack the soundtrack sucks and like did she even do the fucking music? Let me double check. Apparently, yeah, apparently Yoko Kano did the music, but it it just sounds fucking awful. It's like did she actually do it or just put her name on it? And it, I don't know, dude. It, I don't know. Aquarian sucks. Don't watch it. The only reason I bought Aquarian is because, like, you know, it, um, again, like, there was this, there was this, for a while, there was this drought of mecha shows that you can buy on DVD and Blu-ray. But, like, Discotech, kind of, Discotech, and Sentai Filmworks and Made in Japan kind of brought back the old shows and re-released it. But, like, I don't know. It was, like, super expensive. And, like, occasionally you, you'll get, like, um, uh, Funimation stuff for cheap. But it's, like, it's just, like, even if for, like, 20 bucks, I wouldn't recommend the show. Which I think I only paid, like, 20 bucks for Aquarium. Cause I I only have the I have the save editions for those shows, but they're like awful. It sucks because the save editions, there are save edition, uh, stuff stuff that are actually pretty good, like the initial D stuff. Um, you know, Gun X Sword is a save edition, but that's a good anime. But like a lot of the save edition animes are fucking garbage, dude. Not gonna lie. You know, but, like, some of them are good. You just have to look them up beforehand, before you buy them. What the fuck am I looking at? Oh, Heroic Age. Yeah, that that's that was a save edition. That was fucking awful. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to end the podcast. I'll just build the rest of this Gunpla. Um, but, you know, off uh, camera. So not off, off mic. <laughs> so, I don't know. I hope you like this podcast. Uh... Like and subscribe, uh, you know. Recommend some mecha shows to for me to to watch. Oh, I have a list of mecha shows we're gonna review at, after I um, finish watching the Super Robot shows. So mecha shows I plan on watching is uh, UFO, Robo Grandizer, Mobile Suit Gundam, Twilight Axis, and Halfway Flash at some point. 
the Super Robot Tyson animes, Blue Blue Wolves, which sounds cool. Argento Soma, Geki Ganger Free, the movie, if that's even real. Red Baron, there's this mecha show called Red Baron. Uh, X Kaiser, which is the first Brave series anime. With Brave series is like, you know, Takara and Fun Samurai is making, like, you know, anime together. Elysium 2003, which is like, a, I think it's a movie. Sega Pain, which I've never seen, saw that show. And Get Giant Robo, the animation. And that's, uh, you know, some of the shows I'm, I plan on watching. Oh, if you want to know what shows I watched that didn't make the list, um, that were close to making the list, were um, for, like, best, my favorite animes to watch. Uh, so, so, it's not favorite animes to watch. Favorite mecha shows, like, my top ten. Um, so, uh, Zone of the Enders Dolores I. Which is actually a really cool show. And if you... I know a lot of people like hate on Dolores I. But love Idolo. If they continue watching this show. They know... Hey. all A bunch of characters from, De, from De, uh, Zone of the Enders Idolo. Is in Dolores I. Not a lot of people know that. But they are. The... Spoiler alert. The main villain of Dolores I is the main character from Idolo. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that because I don't think they get that far in the show, but yeah, it's uh, when that uh, once he be once he um once he uh, once he's revealed the show gets a lot better. So check that out. And um, you know Majestic Prince, I I mentioned that. Uh, Astral Ocean uh, um uh, oh, Blue Gender. Blue Gender is actually... Blue Gender is one of the few Funimation shows, mecha shows, that's actually really good. But it's like... It's a very black pill like, anime series. So it's like... You, you gotta be ready to, like, be depressed. Like, after watching the show. Alright, that's the end of this podcast. Uh, I'll see you later. I'll try to do some editing.